Automatic transmissions have been around for a long time in automobiles, and Chevrolet has had automatic transmissions for many years. In fact, Chevrolet introduced its Power Glide in 1950, partway through that particular model year, and it continued to be Chevrolet's main transmission all the way through the 1960s, when it was often fitted behind small block V8s, although there were instances where you could get a big block V8 that was backed by a Power Glide. Now, when the Power Glide was first introduced, it didn't shift from low to high automatically, and that's something to know about the Power Glides. There were only two speed automatics. It's kind of funny to think about a two speed automatic in this day and age when there are eight speeds, nine speeds, 10 speed transmissions, continuously variable transmissions. And here you have an automatic transmission that was two speeds, a low and a high. But it worked because the engines back then were generally relatively torquey. And while fuel economy wasn't quite the concern that it is today. Regardless, those power glides that were introduced partway through that 1950 model year did not automatically shift from low to high gear. That was something that the driver had to execute manually. And as a result, if you just left it in the high range all the time, well, 0 to 60 took about 5 miles. However, in 1953, Chevrolet introduced a power glide that automatically shifted from low to high, and that significantly benefited consumers because then they could have some performance along with the automatic transmission. As I mentioned, the Power Glide became a mainstay for Chevrolet in the 1960s, particularly when it was outfitted behind small block V8s. And oftentimes the Power Glide had a first gear ratio that was considerably taller than other automatics. Remember during this time that Cadillac had a four-speed hydromatic and well, not just Cadillac, other General Motors divisions employed that four-speed hydromatic as well. And then in the 1960s, the turbo hydromatic series of transmissions were introduced, and those had three speeds. But just having two speeds, the Power Glide's first gear often had a ratio of about 1.78 to 1, whereas three-speed transmissions, the first gear would start out at around 2.7, 2.8 to 1, meaning that you could achieve greater torque multiplication with these particular transmissions and have a faster, more speedier takeoff. Regardless, the Power Glide would continue on through 1974 as a transmission offering for Chevrolet, and it was a very durable transmission. Few people would report problems with their power glides. And so it was kind of a cheap automatic that was very durable, didn't get the best performance, didn't necessarily deliver the best economy, but it worked and it worked quite well. There were different versions of power glides over the years. There was one that was used overseas that had a shorter first gear, I think 1.82 to 1. The one domestically, actually, I believe was a 1.76 to 1 uh, first gear ratio. And then there were cast iron power glides, the older ones that were made out of cast iron. Then you have the aluminum power glides, but really all were durable. However, there is one variant of the power glide that many don't know about, and it's a kind of a crazy transmission, and that is the so-called torque drive transmission. Now, what in the world is the torque drive transmission? Well, Chevrolet introduced this transmission in 1968, and it had a very brief lifetime. It lasted from 1968 through to 1971, and that was it. And it effectively was a power glide that you had to shift manually, kind of similar to the original introductory power glide back in 1950. But the idea here was that it was a lower cost transmission that was effectively a power glide without a vacuum modulator. So it couldn't shift on its own. You had to move and manually manipulate the shifter and shift it from low to high. And that was the intent. It wasn't just to leave it in drive. It was that you would start out in low and then you could shift it to high. Or you could leave it in high and, well, again, 0 to 60 or whatever speed you were trying to go was going to take a long, long time to get there. But the transmission was made so that you would be the person who was shifting it as opposed to that happening automatically. It was only offered on lower end, low horsepower, I should say low torque, really, transmission and what they can do are dependent upon the engine's torque. But low torque engines and basically four-cylinder, six-cylinder Novas and Camaros, and that really was it. And again, the intent here was to give 
customers a low-cost alternative to an automatic transmission, kind of an automatic manual, I guess, to some degree. It, this would, the advantage of this was that you didn't have to keep operating a clutch pedal like a manual transmission, particularly if you were in traffic, and you didn't have to pay as much as if you wanted a fully automatic transmission like a power glide. In fact, the torque drive transmission cost about $68.00 which would be the equivalent of about $500 today. So it wasn't necessarily cheap, but it was $100 cheaper than the Power Glide, which was about $150, $160 option at the time, or the equivalent of around $1,200, let's say, in today's dollars. So it wasn't nearly as expensive. It was less than half of the price of the Power Glide. But what ended up happening was, as you can imagine, try to imagine the salesperson sales pitch and the dealer here. Well, why should I get this particular transmission that is neither an automatic or a manual? Well, I don't know, Mr. Customer. If you don't want to operate the manual transmission, then you can get this instead. But I've got to shift it on my own, don't I? Yes, well, you do. Well, why wouldn't I get the power glide? I don't know. It's cheaper. And that's kind of the conversation I would guess that happened in showrooms. And I can't really imagine any other reason other than cost why someone would opt for the torque drive transmission in their Chevrolet. And in fact, that's what you would see in the advertisements for the torque drive transmission. Take a look at this advertisement and it says, don't clutch and advertises the torque drive's price of, well, basically $69. And you can read the ad copy. It's basically saying, well, this is a way that you don't have to worry about operating a clutch pedal in traffic. Now, the interesting thing about the torque drive, aside from the fact that it was a, a non-automatic, automatic transmission, I guess, is that if you ordered the torque drive, you got a special shift quadrant on your car. It didn't just say PRNDL like it would on the normal power glides. It said PRN high and then first. And then it had a little torque drive sometimes to signify that it was torque drive. So, you know, you got a little bit of a different shift quadrant, kind of an interesting philosophy for this transmission. And I suspect that there were a couple reasons why it didn't take off. Uh, one was the reason I mentioned for sales. It's kind of a tough sales pitch to talk about a, a manually shifting automatic with a customer despite its lower price. And my guess is a lot of dealers didn't order these because they just couldn't explain to the customer what the value was. It's probably something the customer only got if they special ordered. I, I cannot imagine a dealer stocking a torque drive transmission car unless they absolutely had to. But beyond that, you have the cost was advantageous. But remember, the reliability of the transmission and the engine, frankly, depended upon whether or not the operator of the car knew what they were doing in terms of trying to affect shifts with this transmission. So if you over rev the engine or you didn't necessarily know how to operate it between first and high, you know, uh, you were out of luck and probably created transmission durability issues and maybe even engine durability issues, likely during the warranty period of the car, and that might have been another reason for its cancellation. Now, my guess is that Chevrolet thought in engineering this, well, heck, the original power glides didn't shift on their own anyway, so let's kind of bring that back and we'll develop it as a low-cost alternative to the power glide. But time had moved on. That was 1950, and now we were in the late 1960s into 1971, and people expected more from their vehicles. I mean, just think about what a car looked like in 1950 compared to what a car looked like in 1968, 1969. It was just an entirely different automobile and, well, for whatever reason, the torque drive never took off. But yes, General Motors did make an automatic transmission that did not shift on its own. I don't believe Ford or Chrysler or AMC, well, AMC didn't make their own transmissions, or other automakers had this exact kind of setup where it really was a manual shifting automatic. Other European automakers had things that were somewhat similar but this is definitely a quirk in the Chevrolet engineering history. Thanks again for watching. Let me know of any other quirky transmissions or powertrain components that you think I could talk about. Put a comment in the comment section. Till next time, take care.